Tell you what, not in great shape, but I'm showing up for you. So welcome, bike, to the headquarters, to the channel. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG, Big Dogs Gotta Eat. And going off of yesterday's video, because I know a lot of y'all draft tonight, a lot of y'all draft tomorrow, this upcoming week. This is vital. This is important. We're going to run through round 7 through 12, or round 7 through the double-digit rounds of the all-fade list. Yesterday, we went round by round, must-draft players. We went rounds 1 through 6 last week. Finished it off yesterday with 7 through 12. We did rounds 1 through 6 of the all-fade list. Guys that we don't want on our fantasy teams last week, which will be linked down below. All those will be nicely, tightly organized for you guys to go check out. So we shall continue that. I'm hurting a little bit right now. If you can't tell, we got after it last night. We had Margs running through the veins. Took the subway into the office this morning. Realized I left my laptop here, my AirPods here. So I was like, I got to go in. Might as well make the video for you guys. There's a goddamn mariachi band playing on the subway. Almost made me do some violent things. Last thing I want. I'll tell you what, though. You ever come to New York? One six, I fucking love 169 Bar. 169 Bar, goat, and with some Bleecker Street pizza, double goat. We got the big dog bash drafts tomorrow night. We're going to have all the boys in the fucking office. Great fucking weekend. Let's tuck our shirts in. I'm not going to yell again, so neither shall y'all. <laughs> Let's start in round seven, and it's two running backs here. It's CEH, and it's Miles Sanders. The more we run through these middle rounds, the more my strategy has started to become just fade almost all of the dead zone running backs. You might you might really like like one or two of them, and you know I won't really fight you on the urge to do so if you want to grab a Brees Hall or an Elijah Mitchell or one of those guys. My strategy has been to get one early on, and then if you're in a managed league, like you're in a normal season-long fantasy league, you're probably going to be able to find an RB2 later on, whether it's Rashad Penny or Chase Edmonds or Ramondre or depending on where Damian Pierce goes or someone off the waiver wire that can give you 8 to 10 points a game. The value of wide receivers this year seems to be so luscious that I want to hit if I have three starting wide receiver spots and two flexes, I want four or five wide receivers in the first like eight rounds because there's so many good options there. Regardless, it's nothing to do with the video that I'm talking about. CH and Miles Sanders. Uh, CH, it's so, so clear to me that this is going to be a committee. They've shown us their cards already this offseason. CH becomes the starter every time they step on the field with Patrick Mahomes. He gets useless carries in between the 20s. As soon as it is a third down, Jarek McKinnon steps on the field and takes those downs. And then when they're in the red zone and by the goal line, Isaiah Pacheco, the rookie, has seen a ton of action. So this is going to be a recycling where we don't get anybody who sees more than 35 to 40 percent of the snaps. Will they each have good individual games this year? Yes. I'm not dre I'm not necessarily fading any of the Chiefs running backs just by a name, but I will not be drafting any of them in the single digit round. So the fact that CEH is a round seven pick, crazy to me. I will gr gladly take Jarek McKinnon round 11. I will gladly take Isaiah Pacheco round 12, that kind of sheesh. If they're going earlier than that, they're off my goddamn board. Miles Sanders also off my board at this point. I had kind of been going back and forth on like what I wanted to do with him, but the more I read into the situation, the more it's clear to me that they want to get Kenny Gainwell very involved in the two-minute drill, the four-minute drill uh, on passing downs in the red zone. And Miles Sanders has missed a lot of practice time very recently with a hamstring injury. That scares me. Late August hamstring injuries are terrifying because these are typically multi-week injuries, right? Like one week at the earliest, but we're already almost at game time, right? We got the NFL kicking off, not this upcoming Thursday, but I think the next one. Holy sheesh. Yeah, this is a problem because when you get an injury this late in the offseason, a lot of the times you see season one and you're fucking licking your chops and you want to get onto the field and you're less than 100%. And the re injury rate when you step on the field at less than 100% is much higher, right? And guys, these guys want to push themselves. They want to play. They've been practicing all summer. They've been working out all summer. They say, I want to get on the damn field. I don't like that he's dealing with this uh, hamstring injury. So, round seven, it's starting to get riskier and riskier. I love the offense, but it just seems like a committee where we don't actually know who's going to be the goal line back. It's Jalen Hurts, basically. I mean, he had 15 goal line carries last year. So, it's almost like throwing a Zeke in the equation. It's almost like, oh, I like Tony Pollard, but you'll never be the goal line back because Zeke is there, because Jalen Hurts is there. So I don't know what the goal line situation is like. I don't know what the pass catching situation is like. You might have a guy similar to CEH in Miles Sanders, where it's a good team, it's a good offense, it's a good offensive line, 
but you're not getting any valuable touches. Like, sure, he could break away a 60, 70 yard run every once in a while, but you don't really want to bank on that. So Miles Sanders right now to seventh round price is not someone I want to be in on. Same thing with Tony Pollard at this point. Again, he is a clear handcuff and you guys will continue to make the same stupid point over and over. He's going to get more slot snaps, going to get more. Slot. That shit never actually comes to fruition in fantasy football, guys. We've ran the numbers. The most like slot heavy running backs in the NFL get like three to four slot snaps per game right? And if they get targeted on a 25% rate of that, that is one target per game. And that's a very high rate to be targeted on slots. Now. Like the numbers don't actually add up. It's great to hear everybody like waste their breath talking about these things that aren't actually real and don't actually matter. Very cute. Tony Pollard, as long as Zeke is on the Dallas Cowboys, Tony Pollard is a handcuff that more often than not is going to give you five to six fantasy points per game. Round eight. No, there's way better options there. Okay. And just a quick reminder, everything you need for your fantasy football draft is in the BDGE draft guide available for purchase on BDGE.co forward slash products link will be in the description. However, the cheapest and the easiest way for you to get it is by going to prizepicks.com. Use the link down below or just use our promo code BDGE when you deposit $10. Not only are you getting our draft guide absolutely free with that first time deposit on prize picks, but they're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match. So if you put down 10, they're going to give you 20. If you put down 25, they're going to give you 50. Plus, we'll be making player prop picks throughout the entire summer and into the season, so you're going to want to get on that platform regardless. All right, Kenneth Walker, Damian Harris are also two guys that I won't be taking. Uh, Kenneth Walker, his ADP will you know skyrocket downwards as more uh more news about like the hernia injury continues to come out and probably tell us that he's not ready for week one but in like home leagues and fantasy leagues with your friends and shit they might just know kenneth walker from college football because i'm most of y'all are probably fucking degenerates who be up uh at saturday morning 10 a.m getting all your fucking bets in on DraftKings and fanduel and all that bullshit and remember kenneth walker how good he was uh so you'll you'll bet on the talent but he is not worth the eighth round pick i promise you take rashad penny there instead he's the starter he's not injured going into the year now damian harris in round eight someone i put on this list and i'm starting to think that the value flop of now you have to take Ramondre stevenson over damian harris and i'm still okay with that but now that Ty Montgomery got hurt in yesterday's preseason game for the Patriots, it seems like it could be serious. And not that Damian Harris is going to get any more pass catching work, but if this backfield was going to be like a 35, 35, 30 split or, you know, 37 to whatever the case may be, this now becomes a more tightly packed snap share there, right? It'll rise all tides. If Ty Montgomery's out, if he's out for, you know, a significant portion of the season, I haven't heard anything about his injury yet. We don't have an update, but if he's out, it's good for Ramondre obviously, but it's going to be good for Damian Harris because it means he'll probably play an extra three to five snaps per game. And it seems minimal, but it will, it will make a difference in fantasy over the long run. So round eight, I'm still not like excited about him because he's a two down guy. Ramondre is the one with the upside and we've heard nothing but like rave reviews about Ramondre all off season. Most of the new England beat reporters are putting their money on him to be the breakout player this, player this year. Um, I'm also getting a little bit nervous that the Patriots are, their offense is kind of like a shit show. Like they don't have an offensive coordinator right now. They don't have someone who's actually calling plays and the new system that they're putting in place has apparently come along very slowly. So I got no doubt that, uh, that under uncle Bill, they will be figuring it out as the season goes by but I'm I'm just avoiding Damian Harris this year round nine we start to move to a lot of rookies so we have uh three rookies and then Corderell Patterson Corderell Patterson has not been playing any running back in Atlanta this this offseason like all the preseason games with the starters he has taken like three snaps total at the running back position they're treating him as a wide receiver if you're treating Corderell Patterson as a wide receiver, he's not going to produce for fantasy for you, okay? We have like a 10-year fucking sample size of that. So the magic that we were able to get in a bottle last year, the electricity in a bottle last year that was Crispy Patterson, that was Judge Sexual Patterson III. My name is Judge Sexual Patterson III, and you must address me as such or you will face the wrath of the law. Ain't come and bite this year, all right? So Corel Patterson, before like round 12, is malpractice in fantasy football this year. I promise you that. Traylon Burks, Sky Moore, and James Cook are the other three rookies in round nine that you need to be very wary of. The one name that will probably surprise you here is Sky Moore. I'm still in on a Sky Moore second half breakout. However, Everything this offseason thus far has pointed to that breakout taking a while to come to fruition. I'm not against drafting Sky Moore. I'll, I'll take him in the 11th, 12th, 13th round. His ADP has to come correct. But right now, he is the fifth wide receiver on the field. 
He's looked good. I don't understand why he's a fifth wide receiver, but they are showing us their cards. Again, that's what teams do in the preseason. We have Juju and we have MVS as the top two guys. It is Mikkel Hardman as the clear wide receiver three. And then Justin Watson continues to get on the field before Sky Moore. I don't think that will be the case for long, but he still has a ways to go before he's making a fantasy impact for you. And it probably won't be till the second half of the year. So I don't want to draft a guy in the single digit rounds that probably won't make an impact until the second half of the year. All right. Uh, Traylon Burks, there's just been like nothing good out of camp with him. No shot. I take him in the single digit rounds. Robert Woods seems to be the one. Nick Westbrook Akini continues to get rested with the starters. Uh, I don't even Kyle Phillips has gotten way more hype out of camp than Traylon Burks has. So he's got a long road ahead of him to be impactful whatsoever as like the wide receiver four or five in this offense right now in a run heavy offense way out on Traylon Burks here. James Cook is another guy who continues to act as the RB three. In Buffalo, they continue to rest Zach Moss and Devin Singletary with the starters throughout the preseason. James Cook has looked okay. I never really understood the weirdo fascination with this kid coming out of Georgia. Like, I get it. He's fun. He's exciting. But here's the thing about James Cook. The guy was there for eternity. He was he got his whole ass degree and maybe even stayed for a master's while he was at Georgia. He saw double-digit carries five times, five total times in four years. He had one as a freshman in 2018. Didn't see a double-digit carry game in 2019. Didn't see a double-digit carry game in 2020. Saw four of them last year. Career high of 12 carries in a game. This weird, like, three-down upside people think he might have is the most insane shit I've ever heard. Here's the thing. I think, like, best-case scenario with James Cook is that he's J.D. McKissick in this offense, which could be great. But J.D. McKissick was also a fucking wide receiver in college who caught, like, 90 passes multiple times. James Cook career high in passes caught in college was 27. There's, like, shitty receiving backs in this class that have caught 27 catches in a year. James Cook, his upside is so fucking capped on a volatile weekly pass-catching basis, all right? So James Cook in the ninth round was always a terrible pick. This has been my sentiment since after the fucking draft, but regardless, get him the fuck out of here. Uh, and then we hit, like, round 10, and again, I don't—I feel like it's kind of stupid to yell at you guys about fading guys in round 10 because they're double-digit picks, and the reason they're going this late is because they're fucking— fades and all you guys are not picking them already i guess just going through some names that have got a little bit of hype this offseason some of these might be like super obvious to a lot of you guys but i just want to make sure you're not like in your home league tonight doing drafts and picking these guys because you heard the fucking name uh albert o seems to have a problem out there in denver so if you're gonna take denver pass catchers it's worth paying up for the Cortland sutton it's worth you know if jerry judy falls to you i'd get him there but albert o has been playing deep into like the fourth quarter of preseason games splitting snaps with all the tight ends there he is clearly not looked at as an every down player in denver and clearly not looked at as like a top target in this offense so i would shy away from being like oh he's going off at tight end 12 i could just kind of throw him into my lineup i think you're going to be disappointed more often than not despite his athleticism other rookies like christian Watson was always someone that you should have faded in redraft, but he's missed the entire summer. He's like the fifth, sixth wide receiver on the depth chart right now. He might not even get real run until like week eight, 10 in the season. So fade his ass as well. And then there's a dude who I have kind of actually, I mean, I stopped like a month ago, but I had been hyping up for a while. I just want to make sure y'all are not behind on the times here. But Isaiah Spiller out there in L.A., I thought he was going to secure up that RB2 role for sure. Better than Josh Kelly, better than Larry Roundtree. Turns out that was a lie. He is clearly far and away the RB4 on the depth chart right now. It is all Josh Kelly and it is all Larry Roundtree as the backups to Eckler. I think it's more likely that Eckler is forced into a role that's bigger than they want. Like, last year they gave him such a large role, and he was so fucking good, but he didn't even want to play that often. Like, there were podcast episodes that he appeared on where he was like, I was begging to come off the field at some point. They didn't have any running backs that they could trust, and now they have the exact same fucking running back. So they're going to overuse Austin Eckler again, which is good for fantasy. It's what you want. But they got these two shitty running backs that it's going to be a weird committee if Eckler goes down. So, like, I guess you could take Josh Kelly first because he's a better player than Larry Roundtree. He's a lot more explosive, but he's not a good running back by any stretch of the imagination. So, so yeah, he's a big fade. Uh, Kenny Galladay, ah, fuck. Kenny Galladay would have been, like, the easiest fade, even though he's going so, so, so late. Kenny Galladay... Every report out of camp has been horrible. He's looked terrible. He's not making plays in camp. He's not making plays in preseason. There were some uh, rumblings that Colin Johnson may actually usurp him on the depth chart, but then Colin Johnson tore his Achilles. So I don't want to go out on a limb there and be like, he's just going to get sat because there's no one to take his actual place now. Yeah, that's that's going to wrap up this video. I just want to get it out quickly because, I, again, I know a lot of y'all are drafting this weekend. We have our bash draft tomorrow night, which I'm fucking excited as shit for. 
I think I'm going to rip off a mock draft tomorrow morning. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and you got notifications on because it will notify you when I go live. I'm not sure what time I would say, maybe like one o'clock ish around there. So I got to get out of here and drink some water and maybe fucking or Chick-fil-A, even though it's 1035 a.m. How early is too early for Chick-fil-A? Right now ain't it. I'll tell you that. We getting it. All right. I love you and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.